Cool. All right. My name is Enrico. I'm a Ruby developer since 2005, and I'm going to talk about uh, Rails and dependency in large applications. <clears throat> Sometimes you start with a small application, and they are a small application over the time grow, and you sort of lose control of it. Other time the application is big and complex from its very beginning. In either case, ignoring complexity will just hurt you. In Ruby and Rails, that means um, assigning too many responsibility in active record models, <laughs> non controller methods, <laughs> helper modules doing a gazillion things, and last, just basically, concerns. <laughs> Now, those poor decisions are sometimes justified as this is the Rails way, those are the uh, Rails conventions, and this is what a Rails developer expects to see. And I don't think I expect to see a model that is like 500 lines long. And I think Rails gives a lot of conventions that fit uh, small application domains, but they don't always fit uh, and are well for larger problems. <clears throat> so, how can a Ruby on Rails engine help. Well, engines and are often used as drop-in functionalities, and most of us probably use them, like Provise and Minari. But uh, they can do more than that. Uh, this is coming from the Rails API, and it states that um, a Rails engine allows you to wrap a specific Rails, uh, sorry, a Rails engine allows you to wrap a specific Rails application or subset of functionality, subset of functionality, and share it with other applications or within a larger pack package application. So what we're going to do is create a very specific engine only used in this one app, not a reusable engine that we use. This is a domain model that I've taken from Evans uh, Domain Driven Design. We're not going to build that real time, but it's just uh, a simplified version of a real-life problem. So we're going to now create um, using engines as building bricks of our application. And first of all, we can uh, create an integration test in our main Rails application. Uh, that's just um, a normal feature that visits a uh, ship cargo URL. Uh, the spec fails because there's no route matching that um, ship cargo. We then create our engine. This is the uh, normal line where it's plugging new name of the engine and the dummy path for uh, testing that engine in isolation. Uh, you can create nested folder structure for those engines. So um, <coughs> the engine folder will just leave in your uh, Rails application uh, sort of directory. Inside of it, if you want to be more um, formal about the separation, you can create application layer, domain layer, presentation layer, and this is what we're going to do in this case. We're just going to add um, to the main application gem file uh, a presentation layer cargo shipping. Inside the cargo shipping, we can see that the um, directory structure is the same as a normal Rails application, but uh, it's missing inside the app folder any models. This uh, cargo shipping engine uh, has its own routes. So that's the final set engine for special layer type of shipping. And um, inside the controller, we just create this empty uh, action. Next, we run a test again. It fails. Still, no route matches. Uh, we need to actually change the main application route. So we mount that uh, cargo shipping engine uh, inside the main application. At that point, the test passes. We're now going to add a very simple um, interaction with uh, another engine called customers. Um, Customer repository are all, so we create, so, well, we run a test again and it's going to fail because that engine is not created. We create it, same as before, and now we need to plug in that engine into the main uh, application gem file, uh, gem customer, so the second line, and we specify the full path of it, which is in engine domain layer customers. And then we create our model, same as the usual um, REST application. Uh, funny thing is, when you do this inside a REST application, uh, all those modules will be um, all those models will be namespaced, and now uh, the test passes. Now this is a very simple example. I, the, a real life application like the uh, last one that I worked on is much more complex. You can't cover it in five minutes. If you are interested in this sort of like approach into uh, separating out uh, complexity of applications, uh, grab me after this. There is lots of um, resources online. There's a mailing list, um, presentations, very good from a couple of guys from Pivot Labs, and this is oh. 